you're looking at two fake candles. On the right hand side is the A tiny 13 using LFSR randomization and two PWM channels. Uh, and that has been around for some time now and we've seen it before on, uh, on this blog and on this channel. On the left hand side, amazingly, are three channels of PWM action via the PFS154, the Paduk chip. So um, it works, and this is going to be a very short video uh, just to shout out the triumph of, um, of the actual usefulness of this, uh, given the long history of, uh, well, I wouldn't say failure, but um, certainly um, it's been an interesting journey. Uh, so we'll have a look under the hood, and uh, in the next video, I think what we'll do is we'll pull apart some of the code that, uh, that made it happen. So once we take out the table tennis balls, uh, you can see what's going on underneath. So this is the A Tiny 13. It's running at around uh, one megahertz, and uh, it's got C code in it, uh, which provides a output to these two PWM channels, one at a faster rate. So this is a fast PWM, and this is a slow PWM. And the overall effect is to uh, provide some sort of randomness that looks uh, like a candle. And it's been working for probably around three years that I've been running this code. To be honest, uh, I have updated this maybe in the last year or so to mainly be running now uh, assembler. So it has changed a little bit, but essentially the output is much the same. Only assembler because the code is a little more efficient in terms of resources, and I can run this process of this microcontroller at around 128 kilohertz and save a lot of energy. But I thought in a fair comparison with the Paduk chip, what I'll do is just I'll go back to that old C code. So that's what I've done. On the left hand side is the PFS154. Not one, not two, but three PWM channels. And it's 11 bit as well, so there's quite good resolution. And what I've done though is, um, in fairness, is that I haven't really tapped into that. I've just run practically the same code as what we've got over here, but with just one extra channel. So we're looking at fast PWM, medium PWM, and slow PWM working together. I think it's probably like aesthetically, for me it's better, but I think everyone's got their own individual opinions on that. It certainly for me also justifies all the work that I've put into programming it and trying to understand how to program it, uh, building the program, etc., etc., etc. So it's been a long, 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 long journey, and it's so good to see the uh, the outcome. Uh, in another video, what I'll do is I'll I'll have a look at the code specifically. But what we might do is just have a look for now at uh, at what's happening in terms of the actual output for the PFS one five four and the A twenty thirteen. So on the right hand side, what I've done is gather a thousand data points. And uh, I'm just showing here like the slow PWM channel, which is the blue line, the faster one, which is the red line, and then just simply adding them together to get an overall picture of what that looks like. And if you have a look at the output visually, you can see it does have that sort of up and down motion, which um, is pretty typical of fake candles. What I've got here is the blue line is the slow one, the red line here is medium PWM, and the green one is the faster PWM. And again, I've just added them all together. And you can see that it's, it's quite a lot smoother than the A Tiny 13, but it still provides those peaks and troughs, which uh, I think anyway provides a more visually pleasing fake candle. So I've got some things ahead of me. I This is done in C at the moment as I mentioned I'd like to do it well I have done it in assembler but I'd like to do this one in assembler so we have a better comparison between the two um, I'd also like to put this one to sleep if possible between uh, changes of PWM signal I'm not sure if that's going to be possible it probably won't be but it's something to explore and also, uh, I want to eventually program part, if not all, of this in Assembler as well and maybe start to explore whether or not we can wind the clock speed back on this guy to conserve energy. Because ultimately, all of these guys all around the house at the moment are running on just a sniff of solar every day. And, uh, and I'd like to do this uh, the same with the PFS154. 
but yeah, hugely exciting to have this guy working as um, well as I originally imagined it with the three PWM channels. We'll look at the programming in detail in another video, but for now, um, yeah, fantastic. Just enjoy.